Turn to, to Benghazi, and I want to ask you about one lingering question, which is the president's actions on 9-11, the night of the attack, because we don't know very much about that. We do know that in the afternoon he had an already scheduled meeting with Defense Secretary Panetta, as well as the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Martin Dempsey. When he heard about this while they were in a meeting on an unrelated subject, he said that he wanted them to deploy forces as soon as possible. The next time that he shows up is that Hillary Clinton says that she spoke to him at around 10 o'clock that night after the attack at the consulate, not as it turned out at the annex, but the attack at the consulate was had ended. Question, what did the president do the rest of that night to pursue Benghazi? Well, the, look, the president was kept up to date on this as it was happening throughout the entire night from the moment it started until the very end. And because this is critically, this, I mean, this is a horrible tragedy. These are people that he sent uh, abroad whose lives are in risk, people who work for him. And I recognize that there's a series of conspiracy theories that Republicans have been spinning about this since the night it happened. But the, there has been an independent review of this. Congress has held hearings. We provided 250,000 pages of 25,000 pages of documents up there. There have been 11 hearings, 20 staff briefings, and everyone has found the same thing. This is a tragedy. And so the question here is not what happened that night. The question is what are we going to do to move forward and ensure that this doesn't happen again? That's why Congress should act on what the president called for earlier this week to to pass legislation that allow us to actually implement all the recommendations of the Independent Accountability Board so we can protect our diplomats around the country, around the world, because. When we send our diplomats off into far-flung places, there is an, an inherent level of risk. We should do what we can to mitigate that risk. But with due respect, you didn't answer my question. What did the president do that night? He was, kept, he, he was in, in constant touch that night with his national security team and kept up to date as the events as they were happening. Well, you say his national security team, he didn't talk to the Secretary of State, except for the one time when the first attack was over. He didn't talk to the Secretary of Defense. He didn't talk to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs. Who was he talking to? He was talking to his, his, national, his national security staff, his National Security Council, or the people who would keep him up to date about these things as they happen. Was he in the Situation Room? He was kept up to date throughout the day. Do you not know whether he was in the situation? I don't, I don't remember what room the president was in on that night, and that's, that's a largely irrelevant fact. Well, the point I'm, is, the, the question is, the premise of your question is that somehow so there was something that could have been done differently, okay, that would have changed the outcome here. The Accountability Review Board has looked at this. People have looked at it. It's a horrible tragedy what happened, and we have to make sure it doesn't happen here's, again. Here's the point, though. The ambassador goes missing. It ends up the first ambassador in more than 30 years is killed. Four Americans including the ambassador, are killed. Dozens of Americans are in jeopardy. The president at 4 o'clock in the afternoon says to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, deploy forces. No forces are deployed. Where is he while all this is going on? I, this has been testified to by the... Well, no. No one knows where he was or how he was involved or who told him there were no forces. The, the, suggestion, the suggestion of your question is that somehow the president... Uh, I just, want, this I'm to just want to know what the answer is. That, that's a, the the assertions from Republicans here that somehow this that the president allowed this to happen or didn't take action is offensive. It is absolutely an it's offensive premise, and there's no evidence to support it. We just I, I'm simply asking a question. Where was he? What did he do? How did he respond? When? How, who told him that you can't deploy forces? And what was his response? As to I that? said to you, the president was in the White House that day. He was kept up to date by his national security team. He spoke to the Secretary of Defense and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs earlier, and the Secretary of later, and, and as events unfolded, he was kept up to date. Let me, here's one of the reasons that people have questions about this. This week, the White House released 100 pages of emails, all the communications between the various agencies in the two days before Susan Rice came on this and four other Sunday talk shows. I just want to put up a couple of the emails from the two, from Friday. Mm -hmm. Friday the 14th, two days before Susan Rice made her television appearance. Friday, 6.48 p.m., Tommy Vitor in the White House. FYI, Brennan, that's the president's counterterrorism advisor, will have edits. I'm waiting for those. 7.39 p.m., Victoria Newland of State. Talking points could be abused by members of Congress to beat the State Department for not paying attention to agency warnings, so why do we want to feed that either? But here's what the president's spokesman, Jay Carney, said about all of this last November. Take a look. The White House and the State Department have made clear that the single adjustment that was made to those talking points uh, by either of, those two, of these two institutions were changing the word consulate to diplomatic facility because consulate was inaccurate. That's the problem. He says there was a single adjustment by the White House and State. Any fair reading of the emails, just the two I read, that's totally misleading. I think we should look at, now the emails are out and everyone can look at them. And I think one of the problems that there's so much controversy here is because one of the emails was doctored by a Republican source and given to the media to falsely uh, smear the I, president. 
But and that, I, I'm not talking about no, that. No, I know, but that's an important point here because we now the emails are out because they. I'm, I'm basing my. Would you agree that the ones I read yes, were publicly? Absolutely, I'm not, absolutely. The point here is that the emails you're referring to were provided to Congress two months ago. Congress looked at them, didn't say a word, didn't bet an eye. They're provided in the context of John Brennan's confirmation as CIA director. After seeing the emails, they approved John Brennan uh, with, a bi with a large bipartisan vote. So th this has been looked at. There's no issue here. What is clear from these emails is three things that the ball of the Republican conspiracy theories here. First, the idea that there was a protest is in every version of the, of the talking points put forward, edited and written by the CIA. No, yes. no they, say, yes. they say the attack, I, I just read it this no, no, morning, no, no. The, they say the attack was inspired by the protests in Cairo. There's no mention of a protest against the video in any of the talking the points. Idea that, the idea that the, the point is that the, the, the argument here has been from the Republicans is that it was it had nothing to do with the protest, and that was somehow fabricated by the administration for political reasons. Is that there is a mention of the demonstration true. about the video is, and the talking points? There was a mention about the, the inspiration is the is protest video. Cairo. Correct. But there's no demonstration said. against the video in Benghazi. What, what, the fact that that happened is what a lot of people have Second thing in the, in the talking points is that the references to terror and al-Qaeda were removed, not by the White House, not by the State Department, but by the CIA. Because, and the, and but this the is State why. Department was this, demanding this is, that it be but removed. This is the, the, thir the third thing that's clear from this is that the motivation here was to try to get it right as best we could in a very challenging situation with, with changing information. And two, to protect the integrity of the investigation. That is why, that is why it's done. In the, in the actual email that was released, not the doctored version, the actual email is uh, the White House involvement here is to say we have to protect the equities, particularly the, equi the investigation. Because that's what's important. We want to bring these people to justice. All right. And I do think I will say, as it relates to the doctored email, the question for the Republicans is: Are they going to be? Is Congressman Issa and others going to be as interested in tracking down the Republican who doctored this email and released it as they are in investigating all of these other things? I certainly hope they would be. We're going to agree to disagree on the emails. I have one last question.